Hello, Mr. Barton here, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at how teachers might deal with the different response scenarios that happen from students. Now, what I'm going to assume here is that you've followed the process in previous videos, that you've asked a diagnostic question, kids have voted one finger for A, two for B, three for C, four for D, you've then listened to their explanations, kids have re-voted, and then to check their knowledge, you've asked a second follow-up question. And what I'm concentrating on in this video is what happens based on the responses kids give to that second question, okay? So, if you think about it, there are a few different things that could happen, and I'm just gonna go through the main ones in this video. Now, I'm just gonna offer my advice for how I deal with them, but this might be different for you. You may have some different ideas, and that's absolutely fine. So, the first thing is there could be a 50-50 split. Roughly half your kids have got that second question right, half of them have got it wrong. How are you gonna deal with that? Well, one thing that really works well, I've found, and it depends on the class, is to pair up the kids. So you get a kid who's got it right, sit them next to a kid who's got it wrong. And it's down to that child to coach the other child about that question and about that skill. Now, where's the incentive? Well, you say in five minutes time or in 10 minutes time, I'm gonna ask another question that's testing that skill. And it's gonna be the coach who's gonna be respond. I'm gonna hold responsible for how successful the child who they're coaching is on that question. Now, when this works, it is a thing of beauty to watch because it's kids working together, all the incentives are there. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, it's, it's not much fun for the coach here. What are they learning? Are they not being held back? Not at all. All the studies suggest that students trying to teach other students is a brilliant way to improve the depth of their understanding. And obviously for the child who's on the receiving end of the coaching, they're getting some personalized one-to-one -to -one tuition, hopefully in a language that they can understand. Okay, so that's one scenario. Your next is this, what do you do if the vast majority of your kids get it right, but you've got a few kids who get it wrong? Well, this might be what I might do bit of small group intervention. I'll get me four or five kids who've got it wrong. I'll get them together, maybe at the front of the class. Now I'm going into that teaching much better informed because I've seen what answer they've given. And the whole point of diagnostic questions is I learn something from the wrong answer they've given. So say it's on, uh, I don't know, uh, Y equals MX plus C. It's not the fact that I'm thinking, oh God, they don't understand straight line graphs. I'm thinking their specific misconception with straight line graphs is this, and that's gonna help me. The rest of the class can continue with whatever work that you've got set, or they can analyze the diagnostic question as we've talked about, or write their own diagnostic question, or you can bring one of them kids in to help with your small group intervention, whatever you want, okay? What about if the vast majority are still getting it wrong? Now, for me, there's two options here. The first is this. And again, depending on the class, this works beautifully. Say you've got like six kids who get it right. I would put those six kids and make them coaches of their own group of kids. And it's like the peer-to-peer -peer stuff we looked at before. Coaches are challenged to explain the topic at a deep level, and then the coaches are responsible for the group's success when I ask a follow-up question later on. So again, this peer-to-peer -peer learning working together works beautifully when it works. Another option though is this. You might decide you need to reteach the majority of the class, but what are you gonna do with the kids who've got it right? Well, what I'd do, I wouldn't necessarily give them follow-up work or let them crack on with the next topic or whatever. I'd say, right, you lot, what I want you to do, write me down in words what each of the wrong answers reveals. Why is the rest of the class getting this wrong? And then create your own diagnostic question. And as I've shown in the video on the benefits of kids writing questions, there's massive gains to be made with students doing this, okay? And then what about this? Everyone gets it wrong. Well, we have a little cry and then we pick ourselves up and then we're fine because it's time to reteach the topic. But, it, but it's good news. You're doing it far better informed. You're not at kind of knowledge level zero here because you've got an idea where the misconceptions of these kids lie based on the answers that they've given. And as we're going to look at um, in a later video, you can actually use the subject insights, so use the explanations kids around the world have voted for as their favorite way of understanding topics to better inform you about how you might want to explain it differently next time you teach the topic. So all's not lost if everyone gets it wrong. And what about this? Everyone gets it right. 
Well, I will personally would do a very quick check of reasons. Very quick check. So just pick a couple of kids. Why have you chosen that? Why have you chosen that? Very quick check of the choice of misconceptions, possibly. So I might say, all right, none of you went for D, but why do you think D was chosen by the question author? Because that just adds a bit of depth to it. But then I'm moving on. I'm not hanging around. I'm moving on. Even if I've planned my lesson based on the assumption kids are going to get this question wrong, if they all get it right and they prove to me they understand it, I've got to do something different. And finally, you might find that useful. That's just my selection of questions and prompts that I use with kids. Because sometimes, if we look at the support, kids don't know where to start, even with a multiple choice question. So I might say to them that, are there any answers you can rule out which looks the most sensible? Do you know what topic this is? Just to prompt them through it. And then there are all my suggestions for different extensions that you can ask based on these diagnostic questions. Anyway, hope that was useful. Take care. Bye for now.